Greetings, YouTubers and history buffs. Welcome to another Wag Swag Productions. I'm your host, Brandon Wagner. Today, we will be talking about the modernist fundamentalist controversy with a focus on Shaler Matthews, who's at the center of the controversy surrounding the modernist fundamentalist controversy from the late 19th to early 20th centuries. Now, before we get started, please like and subscribe below. As you know, YouTube is changing the algorithms and it might not be long before this channel is gone for good. Now, first off, a little background on the modernist fundamentalist controversy, which was a conflict between traditional conservative Christians and liberal Christians who thought that the Bible was not always literal. And the morals of Christianity should be adapted to modern times and the sciences. Many conservative modernists aimed to show that science was proof of God's existence and that the language of scripture was more like poetry rather than being precisely literal. The modernist movement grew up around the expanding universities of the late 1800s, which were being funded more and more by private entrepreneurs rather than churches. The influence from private entrepreneurs encouraged more research into the sciences as they hoped that would advance humanity. Many modernists pushed a reinterpretation of the Bible and Christian beliefs and felt that Christianity had to be reinterpreted and reapplied to society if Christianity was to survive in the ever-changing modern world. One of the more popular modernists of the late 19th and early 20th century was Shaler Matthews. Matthews was a liberal Christian theologian involved with the social gospel movement, a devout Baptist, a prolific author, and served as the Dean of the Divinity School for the University of Chicago. One of his more popular books, The Faith of Modernism, published in 1924, Matthews argues for the need to adapt Christianity to the modern times. Some of the adaptations mentioned are to first establish a historical basis of Christ and his message, two, to understand the nature of doctrines, three, distinguish between the pattern and the essence, and four, apply the essence to the modern pattern. Matthews was trying not to alienate conservative Christians and made it clear that he valued the Christian faith and its proclamation that Jesus is a savior, the human need for salvation, and the continuation of life after death, and the Bible as a complete record of revelation. Matthews also argued that humanity needs faith and that the divine presence is involved with human affairs. Now, that being said, Matthews was insistent on subjugating biblical texts to objective scientific scrutiny, free from the confines of conservative Christianity. Matthews also argued that religion had nothing to fear from advances in science, and Matthews encouraged scientific inquiry. In his book, The Contributions of Science to Religion, Matthews incorporated the theory of evolution into his religious views, arguing that the Bible does not exclude the possibilities of evolution. These views in the Bible is what put Matthews in the center of the debate between modernist liberal Christians and fundamentalist Christians. An article from the Indianapolis Times from 1929 shows that Shaler Matthews spoke at an Honor Day event at Butler University, where he addressed the students with a speech called Our Bewildered Morality. In this speech, Matthews states that new situations always demand new adjustments of life. Morality is a good deal like the rules of football. They are made as the game proceeds and agricultural age has a morality which needs to be developed in a commercial age. Morals in a commercial age need to be developed in an industrial age. This quote from Matthews seems to show that Matthews feel the morals need to be adapted to the ages. In an article from the New York Times in 1935, a summary of Shaler Matthews' argument shows what Christianity must do to become creative Christianity. Matthews argues in this article that Christianity must put away formulas and practices that are socially outgrown and implement love with the growing knowledge of mankind and the universe. These ideas did have their backlash as the fundamentalist movement built momentum to combat what it saw as a threat to traditional Christian values. The slippery slope argument was common with the fundamentalists. The question in regards to creative Christianity is, what practices and formulas are socially outgrown? Other questions then arise from his earlier quotes, such as, what morals need to be adapted? Is it because of the rise of technology, such as the old Luddite argument that machines are replacing humanity? Do we need to adapt our morals to the ever technologically changing world? And how far, if at all, should the doctrines of Christianity be changed to adapt this ever changing world? Let me know what you think below in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Wax Wag.